It was an autumn day in Benevente Bernier when Patrick once more walked its streets and arrived at the home of his father and mother. It had been his home six years ago, and now it seemed it would be again, though a lot had changed. Patrick had been through so many new experiences and endured so much. He was taller, stronger, and weather-beaten. Along with his leaner, tougher appearance, Patrick's inner world had changed forever. The young teenager that had left these shores had now been transformed into a man that had been touched by God. He had found in his heart and cultivated the love and compassion for his fellow men and women that would guide him through the rest of his life. For now, though, as he stood at the doorstep, it was enough to have his mother run to him, tears of disbelief running down her cheeks, his father's beaming smile and look of astonishment. What were the odds of a captured slave ever returning? Their boy was home. News spread fast and friends and neighbors flocked to see this miracle. Patrick was back with his family. He was home. Now Patrick could begin to think about pursuing a normal life. He could think about a career, perhaps start a family. His family could look forward to a good life as they aged, with Patrick there to take care of them. After all that Patrick had been through, and after all his family had suffered from his absence, a quiet life surrounded by friends and family offered great comfort indeed. Then one night, soon after his return, Patrick had a dream. Or was it a vision? At any rate, it left him confused and torn. It was a dream he could not decipher, and one he could not ignore. In it, he sees a man approach from the distance, and he is carrying a huge bag full of letters. He drops them at Patrick's feet, picks up one of the scrolled letters, and hands it to Patrick. He opens it and begins to read, noticing that the title of the letter is The Voice of Ireland. Just as he starts to read, he hears a chorus of voices far in the distance, and they sing, Holy boy, boy, come and walk walk among us. What did this mean? And where was this dream coming from? Now that he was finally back home, was he to return to the one place that he had suffered so much? However, it was there in the midst of his sorrow, pain, and loneliness that he remembered his teachings from the Bible. Love your enemy. Pray for your persecutors. It was there he began to grow love in his heart for those around him. His suffering while in Ireland had taught him so much and made him who he was. So, do the people of Ireland want him to return? He was confused, and even if they did, should he answer by returning or carry on with his own life, the life he had missed for so long? Then the next night came the second dream. In this dream, Patrick heard a single voice, beautiful-sounding words, but he could not understand them until the last words were spoken. The one who gave you your spirit is the one who speaks in you. He mouthed the words to himself again. The one who gave you your spirit is the one who speaks in you. This left no question in his mind. Patrick understood this to mean that the plea he had heard in his dream was coming from God, and so Patrick had to obey. Whatever dreams and hopes he had of a normal life in his own community, he would have to put them to one side. In his heart he knew how much this would hurt his family. They had thought that they had lost their son forever, only to have him back in their lives as if by some miracle. Such relief and rejoicing seemed like such a gift. Now their boy says he must leave them. How could fate be so cruel? 
Patrick explained that this was a calling he had to heed and pleaded with them to understand and that he would have to work hard. Thank you.